What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing a full repair and service video on a Bissell Power Force Compact Turbo. Now, this exact process is 100% identical for the Bissell Power Force Compact models, specifically the newer style of the 15... Is it... Oh, I just forgot that. Is it 1520 and then 2112, I believe, are the exact model numbers? This particular model number is 2690, and this particular unit is a 6.2 amp unit. This exact machine, the turbo, is identical to the normal Power Force Compacts in every way, except instead of it being blue or purple or some other color, it's green. And it's supposed to have a turbo brush bracket right up here on the top of the handle, as well as a turbo brush attached to it, but as you can see, in this case, it happens to be missing. So the only real advantage to this machine over the normal compact, other than perhaps if you like the green color, is that it has a longer cord on it. This one has a 23 foot cord. The standard compact has, I believe, an 18 foot cord. So if you're looking at this machine over the standard compact, the longer cord may be an incentive as the cord length on this is the exact same as the more common Power Force bagged and Power Force Helix models. So. We're just going to go ahead for the sake of servicing this, we're going to remove this handle. The main problem is that this particular unit, the handle, this actual latch is not wanting to budge for some reason, so the handle is very firmly on here. So yeah, there we go, we had to just kind of force it, and now the handle pops off just fine. You can see there's the slot right there, handle comes off, and you can see if you have the turbo brush on your model, there will be a bracket right here with the turbo brush attached to it. Just pop that off if you want to do something with that. And now we have the main body of the cleaner. So we're going to start off. This is kind of dirty. So we're going to go ahead and take off the cyclone assembly. And we're going to open this up and inspect the filter. And yikes, that is a pretty bad filter right there. We can see that the dust cup also has some debris in it so we'll be sure to clean that up real quick with our lovely bench vacuum oh and another thing real quick for those wondering how to release the dirt container there's a button right here on the back you just push it and then all the material dumps out right there then you close this up you open this top piece right here this entire section right here lifts out if you'd like to clean it. So actually it's, it appears to be in, it appears to be jammed in the wrong way, which explains why it's hard to remove on this particular machine because the previous customer jammed it in here the wrong way. And you can see just a little bit of elbow grease pulls that out. This also disassembles right here. So you just twist this just like this. And then these two pieces separate just like that. So debris will often get stuck in this portion, so make sure that's clean, make sure the cup is clean, and of course this filter, I'm going to pull this out, you can wash this in warm water, run water through it until it's fully dry, or until the water runs clear, and then you want to let it sit out until it is fully dry for about 24 or 48 hours, depending on whether or not you're putting it in a sunny or in just a normal dry environment. So there's that, so we're going to go ahead and start cleaning this up.
And so now we're gonna take this hose right here and just pull this straight off. And this hose right up here, you twist it. Just twist it counterclockwise. And when you twist it counterclockwise, it'll lift right out. Okay, now as you can see, we also were able to remove the hose. So this hose, again, in case you couldn't hear it the first time, you just turn this hose counterclockwise and it pulls straight out. And then if you wanna put this hose back in, you just, again, just put it back in and then just twist it clockwise and it goes back in place. So this filter is particularly bad. We're gonna to have to wash this. And if this doesn't wash out right, we're gonna to have to replace this. So just keep that in mind. Whenever, once you remove the hose, you want to check for any cracks or splits in the hose. And there also could potentially be something lodged in the hose or clogged. This hose is small enough, you should be able to just look down this hose very easily. It's a completely straight hose. If you can see light through the other end, it's not clogged. So at that point, you wouldn't have any real issues with loss of suction, assuming that it's not clogged and that there are no splits or tears in the hose. This particular hose is pretty dirty, so it could use a wash. So we may end up going ahead and doing that. So we're just gonna kind of set these parts aside. All of these parts are gonna get washed because at first I thought I could just deal with just cleaning this out. It appears this machine is a little bit worse and it's gonna require a wash. Now is also a good time to check the cord. If you see a nick like this where you can see a little bit of white but there's no actual wire showing, you should be okay. You should be able to just patch that up, patch that up with some electrical tape. But be careful if there's any bare wire or copper showing. You definitely do not want to continue using your machine. You want to take it to your local vacuum store and make sure they can properly install a new cord on it. Or just if you know someone personally who is very good with electrical stuff, maybe they can install a new cord on it for you. Or you may just have to replace your vacuum. So that's another thing to check while you're here. Make sure there are no major splits in this cord or tears. Otherwise, that could affect both the usability and the safety of your machine. So now that we've gotten that taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and check the bottom of this machine. And first thing we wanna do is just kinda use our fingers and see if you can turn this brush roll. If you can turn this brush roll and there's a little bit of resistance but it's turning smoothly, then you know that your belt and your brush roll are pretty okay. May not be perfect, but they're still probably pretty okay. Make sure your bristles stick out a little bit from the bottom of this. If they do not stick out, whenever you put your hand like this, you don't feel the bristles when it's flush against this base plate. Your bristles are likely worn down. You may need a new brush roll. If you want to access the belt or many of these brush roll areas, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five screws on, in this case, a green bottom plate. Again, depending on your machine, it can be blue, it can be red, it can be orange, whatever color your machine is. The most common colors on these machines are blue, green, and purple, but if you have a limited edition, then yours may be a different color. But either way, just this colored base plate. You want to take all these screws out. Again, if there's any rust on these screws, you're going to want to replace those screws. You can get those directly from Bissell's website. At least last I checked, you could. They're very inexpensive. If your screws are badly rusted out, that probably means that your vacuum was exposed to some sort of a liquid or just a very damp area and you want to make sure that, that doesn't happen again so now that we removed all the screws we can gladly we can gladly that's the right word we can easily pull this base plate off you can see there is some dust and debris there's especially going to be some dust and debris on specific sides of this brush roll so what we're going to do is we're just going to take these and set these screws aside I had, a magnetic, I had a magnetic screw tray, but I don't know where I placed it. I might seem to have misplaced it, but those are great options. If you want to keep, oh, here it is. If you want to keep those screws out of the way, 
It's a great little tool to have. You can get these on Amazon for super cheap. Hopefully that's focusing on that. But yes, so now we can clean this up a little bit. Now the screws are out of the way. Again, if you have another vacuum, it's the best way to do this. If you don't have another vacuum specifically to service your own machine, then you may just need to kind of knock, the, all, knock all the stuff on the floor and vacuum it with your vacuum once it's fully repaired. So, that, which is not an ideal solution, but it's necessary if you want to keep your vacuum up and running. This is a great way to make sure that it's running, do all these steps, and you'll be able to make sure that your machine runs for a long time, as long as you keep it maintained. So one other little issue that this particular machine is having is that this, I don't know if this was like a manufacturing defect or what, but this height adjustment is not wanting to go in for whatever reason. I don't know if this was brought to a shop and they, and they reassembled it wrong, but this is a bit of an odd feature to have. So, this explains why this particular machine was thrown out. So, I'll need to do some sort of work on that. I'll take the brush roll out, just grab both sides, and this pops right out. You want to make sure there's no debris in either side of the brush roll. If there's any hair on the brush, you want to just grab that and pull it off. Otherwise, you can use a box cutter or a pair of scissors to cut off some of this hair if it's tightly wrapped around this brush roll. I want to be very careful of that. We can see that a lot of hair can get wrapped. You can see we actually have some fishing line in here that's been wrapped around this drastically. And we wanna make sure this is all off because any hair debris that's on a brush like this long term can potentially cause the belt or the end caps of the brush to burn through. So we wanna make sure that is as clean as possible. Which in this case requires us to unwind a large spool of fishing wire from this particular brush roll, which may take a lot longer than the time that I have for on camera. I'm just gonna kinda do that and just wrap it around my hand, but not tight enough to where it cause any circulation issues, of course. So this is an involved process for this particular brush roll, but it's worth it to get all the hair off and all the string off, so again, Again, you should be able to just pull most of this off with your fingers. Gloves are recommended if you're doing this on someone else's machine or if you're just really concerned about germs and nastiness, especially in this era. I'm not too worried about it though. So once we get all this hair cleaned off, our brush roll will be in good shape. So I'm just gonna do this for the rest of this brush roll and it'll hopefully look a lot better. And while we're here, we can also go ahead and clean up any dust that's settled on the inside of this brush housing. And while we're here, now is also a good time to check the belt and make sure that there are no cracks or splits anywhere on the belt. We just want to make sure that there's no burn marks, nothing like that, because that can, of course, affect the belt and affect the ability to clean carpet. So if you do have any sort of wear on your belt, now would be a good time. Now, now, now would be a good time to change it. So 
That's another thing you want to check while you're here. Make sure that your brush roll is good. Make sure your belt's good because both these are critical in terms of making sure this can properly clean your carpets. All right, so we got all the brush. We got all the brush. We got all of the hair off of this brush, or well, at least a good number of it, mainly the fishing line. So we can go ahead and throw away all the, look at all this fishing line that came off this. This is ridiculous. So we can go ahead and throw all this away and then get back to the vacuum itself. All right, so in the case of this particular machine, it appears that that this high adjust mechanism is not on properly. It's, it's not wanting to, and it's not wanting to like sit properly in this housing the way that it's supposed to, which I'm thinking, I think it's because this base is on. I think someone might have installed this base incorrectly. So we're gonna try taking this apart and seeing how well it goes. So there's two screws on the back here that connect this hose. We're gonna remove these. Okay. So basically we're just gonna take the base off and hopefully redo that. This hose pops right off just like that. And then now there's two screws on either side holding the base in. Now the brush roll, the belt, and the bottom plate are all off. This will be very easy to get this part off. So. Just like that. Oh. Pull that off of the screwdriver. And on this side now too. Same thing. Make sure all these screws are somewhat clean. Just vacuum this off again real quick. Okay, and then now that we've got all that out, this should just lift straight up. Mo the motor shaft will be a little bit in the way, but that's to be expected. So, just like that. We do have some rust on this motor spindle, so we'll have to clean that up. If you get like a seating stone, you can clean that up. I'll do that at a later time. But now is also a good time to just sort of clean all this up and get this looking somewhat presentable. You can pull it down to the motor if you want. I'm not going to do that this time, but if you want to, the options there. We're gonna make sure that this is in here correctly. And again, now we're going to make sure this is all cleaned up. So I don't have a rag with me, so I'm just going to be using a large towel and what I'm going to be trying to use, which is something new that I haven't tried before, is I'm going to be using Zep Degreaser, Industrial Purple Degreaser, which would be really good for something like this where it's very, very dirty and there's not a lot that you can do outside of just vigorously washing it several times to get it properly clean. This is a fairly extreme example of a dirty vacuum. So maybe I'm going to try this new method and see how well this does. So I'm gonna try not to get this on the carpet. I'm just gonna see how well this does the way that it is. So according to this, it says to spray, wait one minute, and then wipe and or rinse this stuff off. So we're gonna see how well this does. It already looks a lot better, I'll tell you that. Yeah, so I may have used too much. I may have used too little. Other technicians who may be watching this can perhaps correct me on this. And if I do happen to do this completely wrong, this is a cheap enough machine that's good enough to do experiments on. So we'll see how well this does. So we're gonna let that sit for a minute. And I could do this for some other parts as well while this is doing this. 
So, you can see it already looks a lot better. So, I'm gonna move on to this main motor piece. Just like that. So we're just gonna spray this. Try not to get it in any sort of exhaust or, you know, anywhere actually in the motor. We're just gonna see how well this does and try not to get it in any sort of negative areas. Again, first ever time trying this, we're gonna see how well this works. And hopefully we should be able to get this. It seems like it is doing a good amount of stuff. So now that we've sprayed this, I, be I believe now would be the good time to wipe this off and okay I don't know if it's safe to get this on your skin I it doesn't say that I need to use gloves or anything yeah it doesn't say anything about needing gloves at least not that I can see so hopefully obviously don't do this in your eyes or anything oh yeah it says it says eye and skin irritant uh, okay. Oh, whatever. Should be all right. So we're going to wipe this off. All right, so now we're wiping all this off. Make sure to get in all those little corners if you happen to be doing this yourself. Yeah, and so far, I gotta say, first impressions of this Zep Cleaner so far are very positive. I have very little in the way of complaints so far. That looks, to me, almost brand new. So... So far, I'm definitely happy with this Zep degreaser. And well, this is more expensive than the stuff I usually use. If it's this effective, then I think I may use this from here on out because that looks brand new. So perhaps Zep is a good product to recommend for cleaning off your vacuum. At least if it looks this bad. It's obviously not necessary if your machine has this the slightest amount of dust on it, but you know, or something like this, should be all right. See, I got some stuck on dirt right there. Let's see how well this does there. And I'm trying to be a little bit careful with where I spray it, just so it's not in any area that's hard to get to. But it looks like I'm doing that anyways. Okay, so we're gonna see how well this does. And again, it says to wait one minute, so we're gonna see Ooh, my hand is burning. So we're gonna see how well that does. Maybe I should be wearing gloves with this. All right, so now this is pretty decently clean. And again, it's not perfect. There are gonna be some dust and stuff in some certain spots, but frankly, this machine doesn't really need anything more than that. It's not worth it. We got a couple little, little dirt pellets that we can clean up. <laughs> And now we can get back to putting this thing back together because eh, it's satisfactory enough for my liking. And I'll get that uh, get that rust off that spindle later. Oh, I didn't clean off the little end caps. I'll get those real quick. I think these actually I can just kind of wipe off. Yeah, those ones aren't too dirty. Just kind of these ones are just kind of a little dusty, so we can just kind of wipe those off. Not the biggest deal in the world. For this particular machine. Okay, that looks good. So we can just, these don't, these aren't keyed in any particular direction. So they can go on the way, actually, never mind. I lied. These do go on. A specific direction yeah, yeah yeah so these are keyed in fact they'll just perfectly kind of slide in their flush just like that and then now we just want to put in the four screws just like we did before and then we want to grab this put this on here make sure this is lined up properly with these screw holes and put those screws in as well 
All right, so we got all these screws back together, and honestly, this height adjustment, what I notice is it's missing like a spring, and also it's almost like warped, like it's not wanting to go back in properly, and I don't know why that is. I mean, this part makes sense, but the, see, the problem is just that it's missing a, uh, a spring, so as a result, it just kind of flops up and down, but it does... It does still work, like it does still do the trick. It just means that when you set it down, it might, you know, set down on this. So honestly, I'm just gonna take this out because I don't, I haven't looked. I'm gonna look and see if I can't find the spring for this, if this is a part that Bissell sells online. But if it's not, then if, if it is, then I'll find that spring and put this back in here with the proper spring. But if it's not, then I'm just going to discard this because, honestly, like, this machine doesn't have a height adjustment anyways. So, the only difference it's going to make is whenever it's upright, it's going to lean forward a little bit. But with how cheap this is, I'll mention that to the to the customer if I do, if I do sell it like this. But So, it does mean that you won't want to put it in a spot because it might burn your carpet. But, give you know, that's probably something I don't really know what the what the other option would be unless I'm able to find that spring or if I had another one of these as like a donor but this is the only compact one I have right now all the other ones I've sold at least I'm pretty sure I might have one out in the shed and if I do I'll rob that part off of that but if not I don't know so that's the only thing this machine's going to be a little bit gimped but it will still work so that shouldn't be the it shouldn't be the end of the world. It's kind of a deal. It's not a big deal, but it is kind of a deal. So, but again, with how cheap I'm selling this, I can't imagine that anyone would, would complain about it. Well, actually, I can't imagine that because there are people out there who do that. And my hair is getting in my face because of the ceiling fan being on. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is plug this in and grab the seating stone and get all the rust off of this motor spindle which will certainly be a fun endeavor so we'll get this plugged in real quick all right i found it oh and i just broke it oh it's fine okay now i have two of them this multiple I didn't break it is this even gonna be on camera Can you even see this come on quit quit falling over And of course, the second I'm fixing it, the fucking power button dies. Whatever. <laughs> Okay, well that's great. I'm sure that's cleaned off. Get all the stupid dust out of there. Well, that's great. 
be good enough. No one's gonna care about that. But at least that means that this motor spindle is now smooth and the belt's not gonna break when we try to reinstall the belt in the brush hole. And I'll also grab this belt. Make sure there's no, no burn marks on this. That should be good. I'm just gonna put that on there, just like that. Grab a brush roll. Ah, uh, it doesn't sound the best. Yeah, this is not ideal either. It does spin, but it's not the freest thing in the world. It is a little bit wonky on one side. Should be all right. That's will help if I put the right side on. Should definitely help. And why is this thing flipping to the other side? I'm just trying to get this end cap in here. There we go. And so this side is keyed. This side is round, so that just pops straight in. Oh, and it helps if you don't clamp it on the belt either. There we go. If this is even in frame and not clamping down on the screws, ah, and it doesn't pinch me either. Come on, turn that belt over a little bit. I want to make sure the belt's riding evenly. And there's no issues with that. Out of the way. Okay. Here we go. Is that in frame? Let's see how this does. Yeah, sounds funky on wind down. Good enough for me. <sighs> okay. Some more cleanup. Let's see how all these little wheels are doing. Wheels are not great, but they'll suffice. Again, when you have a machine that's this cheap, it's only worth doing so much. Oh, and one of the clips is broken, but that's okay. Honestly, I'm not even just getting this away for free. I'm not quite sure yet. Or like $5, who knows. So these machines are not the, you know, these cheap compact budget machines are not the best machines if you want to actually make a profit, given that they sell this exact machine for $60 brand new. Yeah, well, I mean, $60 actually if you include tax and everything, but most people look at the sticker. I believe the sticker the sticker on this is, uh, is it 53, 54, uh, 56, I think. I think it's 56, I'm pretty sure. Or is it 54? I don't remember. It's some, somewhere in that range. But yeah, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these screws in, which you can see. Five screws right here. I don't think I need to show that on camera, but we got five screws. We'll put that in real quick. And I'll put some of this up and try to clean off some of these marks on the bottom. And yeah, it looks a little empty without this, but it's going to have to do for now. There we go. That isn't perfect, especially given that this is missing, but it's much better than it was. So now we'll just put this upright. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and put the handle back on, which we're gonna wipe down real quick. Shouldn't need too big of a wipe down, it's not all that dirty. Well, it's not really dirty at all. So let's make sure this is all clean. There is some dust inside here, so it looks like they did use this as a wand. Yeah, so. And, oh, and we can see right here that this doesn't want to kind of clip in. But there's nothing in here. There's nothing blocking it. Actually, there is something in there. Yeah, 
right, so now this button's actually working like it's supposed to. But the handle doesn't want to go down in all the way. You gotta kinda clip it on yourself. But that's okay. So so that's pretty much it. Uh, we are going to go ahead and wash the rest of these components, but we will still test uh, how well it works in the meantime. And then I'll go ahead and pull these parts off again. So we'll, we'll reassemble this for now, but this will get fully stripped apart. Or these, or I should say these parts in particular. So again, when you put the hose back in, you wanna just line up little tabs with little slots push it in until it's flush like this, turn it clockwise until it snaps into place. Then there's a little snap right here, although it's not that, you know, you're not gonna hold it too well. And then you just put it, friction it into the bottom of this and that works like that. And then now, as far as all this, we'll put this together real quick. And this clips in, make sure the little tab actually goes over this, this is very brittle plastic. And if that doesn't go over, then your bin's gonna flap open. Again, this isn't the cleanest thing in the world, but we are about to wash all of this. And I'll put this back together. So there's two little grooves. There's two little grooves on this clear piece. It is keyed, so we can easily push that back in. And it goes in, you see this little slot right there slides in like that. There's this little lip on the front which goes in the front of the bin like that. It should go in very easily and it should all these tabs on here should be flush. And then of course the filter. There's two little notches on the filter that goes in like that. Again this will be cleaned but for now that goes Part like that, that goes together like that. Again, the reason I'm not wiping this down is because I'm about to wash all of this. Or, you know, actually, you know what? Never mind. I think I am going to go ahead and try cleaning this with the Zep. But first, we'll try this out. The filter should be clean enough for it to work, but again, not ideal. So we are going to try it.
Okay, well the power switch just busted on this thing, but at least the rest of it's fixed. So I, it looks like I am going to have to pull this thing down the motor to fix that power switch or just give this away to somebody who doesn't care about the power switch. So yeah, well that was a very hectic video. So hope you enjoyed this video on how to fix the Bissell Power Force Compact Turbo. And I will do a separate video on how to clean the filter and the whole desktop since I didn't clean that in this video. So anyways, this is Intellitech Studio signing out. Hope you guys see, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.